like to put forward a domination of a brother who's been paying dues to our local union for 34 years. Started out as a steward at Hay & Company in Woodstock. Worked his way up to plant chairman and in 1959 was elected president of our local union. In 1961, he was appointed to staff by Brother George Burt. In 1971, he became administrative assistant to Brother Dennis McDermott. And in 1978, he became director of UAW in Canada. Gives me great honor to nominate Brother Bob White to be president of our national union, UAW. I declare that by your unanimous choice, you have chosen as your first president, your first national president, Brother Bob White. I remember in 1957, as a young person, when I went to my first Canadian Council meeting, not as a delegate, but as a chairperson of a local union in a plant that was on strike, a small woodworking plant. And I went there driven up by a good friend of mine, Albert Seymour. We almost crashed the car getting there. And I was allowed the floor at that council to speak and to ask for support for what I thought was the most important strike in my life, and it was at that time. And I was received well at that council and saw for one of the first times the importance of the organization. And then later that year, I traveled to Atlantic City. I heard personally for the first time a man who fundamentally changed my life, Walter Ruther. And I saw for the first time at that convention the broadness of the social philosophy of our union much more than I'd understood it before. And I was absolutely mesmerized by Walter in terms of how he chaired the convention, how he spoke at the convention. You could not have got me out of that convention for a cup of coffee when Walter Ruther was speaking. We're building our new organization with enormous confidence because we have no, no intention of letting this organization fail. It has, as you said this morning, we came from a family that has a long, long tradition of success in the fight for collective bargaining and economic and social justice. And I just want to say to you that the UAW Canada, which has been given birth in Toronto this week, will move onward and upward together with the rest of the Canadian labour movement. And thank you very much for coming here. You talked about the workers and how the corporation like the sort of separate us, and I, the Chrysler people remember this in 1982. We were going down to the wire, we were two, ways, two days away from the strike deadline, and I was asked to go to Detroit to meet with Lee Iacocca along with Mark Stepp and Doug, and I didn't think a three-on-one was a good idea, so I said, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I said, if he wants to meet us, he ought to come to Toronto. And he did. And my know the media friends won't print this because it'll cause me trouble another couple of weeks at Chrysler, but we went down. I remember they said that he was coming to town and somebody picked me up and he was located in the Harbor Castle Hilton Hotel and I went into his room. I'd never met him before in my life. And he had a cigar going and somebody gave me one before I went, so I lit one up too. I want to be even. And Iacocca, as he always does, gives pontificates about all of the problems around the world. And then we sat down and he looked at me and he said, so we have a problem with the committee and the membership here, eh? And I said, I never met you before in my life, Lee. We don't have any problem with the goddamn committee and the membership. You've got a problem with me and we're going to strike your corporation until you put some money in the package. I said, you ain't going to separate the leadership of this union from the membership, and it took a little time, but we got a buck fifteen up front. Tomorrow, in all of the major daily newspapers across the country, I think 42 in total, 
We are taking a full two-page ads to make the case we believe against free trade and foreign election on behalf of the Canadian people. That our jobs are not up for sale, our social programs are not up for sale, our cultural identity is not up for sale, our political independence is not up for sale. Canada does not belong to the government of Ottawa. It belongs to the people of this country, and we're going to damn well have something to say about what happens to it in the future. Speaking against the free trade agreement, Maude Barlow from Bob White. I've seen corporate America up close. I've seen their value systems. I've had to lead fights to stop them from bringing those value systems to apply to Canadian workers. And I don't want those value systems to become the yardstick of the relationship between our two countries. I want to, if I can, take our minds back to a few years ago, as Brother Hansen said, when we had this type of discussion before, as plant after plant was closing. We had the Bendix situation in Windsor, we had several other plants, and I remember we had a CAW council meeting in Port Elgin. And I remember saying to that council before noon one day that I thought we might have to reach back in the history of our union and do something much more dramatic because there's no good in picketing empty plants. And out of that came a decision that if we were going to have all of these plant closings, we had absolutely no legislation then at all. We made a decision that the next plants that were going to be closed, we were going to find a way to take over the plants from the inside and stop the employers from taking their equipment and everything out of the plants. Let's be clear here. We've had a long bargaining relationship here. When a company announces a closing, they have an obligation to sit down and talk to us the reason for the closing and sit down and negotiate a severance package. And uh, we represent these people, and, and we're going to get into this plant one way or the other, just so as you know. And we're going to see that some obligations are fulfilled, and hopefully we can do it legally. But we're going to go in and talk to the workers. You're not doing it legally now. My friend, this is just as legal as you taking jobs out of this country. Just as legal. Doug, we're coming through. Caterpillar was an example, a pure, raw example, of how the absolute free market system left to its own devices destroys people. Workers' rights didn't happen by accident. Workers joined together in trade unionism, fought like hell to make change happen. And that's exactly what's the case of minorities and women in our society today. Women won't get on the executive boards of local unions or elected to the committees and the plants by accident or if you throw them in the general pool. You have to make some decisions that you're going to move them ahead on the certain affirmative action programs. It has to be done in order that they can have an opportunity to play the rightful place within this union. We should not today underestimate the attack that's going to be put on this labor movement. I've had more editorial coverage in the last year than I ever thought would have believed in a lifetime, most but not very complimentary. And I say to myself, I look at what the union trade union movement is doing, I see some complimentary editorials in local union newspapers, and I say, Bob White, you've got to be on the right track when the local union leadership are writing good things about you and some of them capitalist newspapers are criticizing you. I think that means we're on the right track. The proud thing we're doing as a central labor body is we're saying that no worker in this country is going to be blackmailed by the corporations or the governments, and that as a labor movement in this country, we will join hands and fight this thing together. Let's endorse this resolution. In 1992, the CLC elects Bob White as the government cuts back on UI benefits. I was there in Newfoundland as he went through the difficult dispute regarding the Spanish situation, the overfishing, and the unemployment situation there. And it wasn't settled just by quiet diplomacy. 
First of all, it was sung by a direct public confrontation because quiet diplomacy had been tried for a number of years. The only way that we can respond is in, first of all, strong unions like this, democratic unions who continue to lead the fight and ultimately join together in this strong democratic central labor movement. Active in local labor councils, active in federations of labor, and active at the national level of the Canadian Labor Congress. But what we're here about is to expose again and continue to expose the anti-worker, anti-democratic, anti-social agenda of the Mike Harris government as they move towards what I believe will be their last term in office in the province of Ontario. This next man has been jailed. He's been detained. He's trying to fight for basic trade union rights in one of the most right-wing military dictatorships in the world in Indonesia. A warm welcome to Brother Pukpahan. And the brother who's desperately trying to keep peace alive in the difficult area in the Middle East. I saw his picture in the Globe and Mail a couple of weeks ago at a meeting with Yasser Arafat, the General Secretary of the Palestinian General Federation of Trade Unions, Brother Shahid. And we've been arguing for a number of years that workers' rights have to be part of any trade agreement, environmental rights have to be part of trade agreements, and there has to be sovereignty decisions on health care, education, and and things that have impact on social society. And I want to say today, as clear as I can, I believe the CAW today is truly an international union. It is a union in the truest sense of the word, international. It is building solidarity with workers around the world, campaigning for social justice. My last speech to any union convention in my role as full-time leader of the labor movement is to my own union. If the history of the 20th century of this country is recorded properly, it will show the enormous contribution that working people of this country have made. And the history will show that the Canadian labor movement has been in the forefront of every major progressive social advance we've made in this country. We've done it along with others, but they include things like we talked about today, about Melt Medicare, public education, public pensions, public housing, UI, reproductive choice, poverty, anti-poverty issues, and many more. But the road ahead is filled with a lot of nails and potholes. It's going to take the solidarity of the total union to get through that. It can't be done without the rank and file activists who every day of your lives talk to workers at the workplace. I could never have imagined, as I thought this morning, that I'd be back here in 1999, retired and seeing a building in this wonderful complex named after me. And the facts are this center would not have been here if it hadn't been the current director's decision way back in those days. It was a group, as Dennis and I talked last night, of rank and file activists, and they wanted to have a place of their own in Canada. But the importance of this center is what happens here. There is no greater importance for activists and knowledge and information. It's about building internal solidarity. It's about getting in classes and talking directly with each other about sexism at the workplace in our society, about racism, about homophobia, about all of the things that divide us, about equality issues, about economic and social justice. And what's important about a center like this, I think, is it doesn't matter from what part of the country you come from, from what section you work in, you find as you sit around afterwards, you hear the debates, you have much, much more in common than you have differences. I remember when I was elected, I was shaking and wondering how we could do things and we got through it. And I, then I said it was time for me to leave and went to the Canadian Labor Congress. But for Ken Luenza to take over from, the, from Buzz and others, take over the responsibilities, and there's a lot of changes happening all over the world. You can see it in negotiations. I want to tell you, he's one hell of a leader, and he's going to take this union, keep going and keep going.
So just remember, keep fighting back makes a difference, and all of you make a difference, and thank you very much for letting me say a few words. Thank you.